everybody welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be talking all about my tips and tricks for the mcmaster and uftpa supplemental applications i did apply to both and i was accepted to both i'll talk a little bit about the resources i use the timeline that i kind of followed and then also just my general strategies and tips and tricks to hopefully help you guys out if you are applying i'll also put some timestamps in the description box below so you can jump to any relevant part of the video and before i get into the video i just want to make a little bit of a disclaimer i'm not associated with any of the admissions for any of the PA schools that I mentioned in this video. I'm simply just a student who went through the application process and I succeeded. So I'm just gonna be talking a little bit about my personal experiences, things that I did that I think helped, but in no way do I know exactly what they are looking for. So you always wanna check the program website for the most official information. Just to give you guys a brief description about the sub apps for U of T and McMaster. At U of T, it's writing based, so they'll give you a few questions and then you'll write some responses to them, edit those responses, and then submit them by a specific deadline. But for McMaster, it's speaking based. They will ask you questions and they will record you answering them and that's sent into the program. Sometimes there's prompts that cause you to write as well. So you'll have a specific amount of time to write your response and then that gets sent in right away. So they are different, but I'll talk a little bit about general principles that you wanna follow for both of them and then also writing versus speaking tips. But yeah, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how I approach the sub apps, then just keep watching. In terms of the resources I used, I only used free resources that I was able to find online. I know a lot of people recommend buying prep books and things like that, but if that's not something that you can do, then it's totally possible to succeed in this application process without that. If you can grab some prep books, that's great, but it's definitely not necessary. I somehow got through it without any prep books. So in terms of those free websites, my favorite one was BMO, just because they had hundreds of questions. Like there were so many different questions that you could use. I mainly focused on personal questions just to make sure that I was confident talking a little bit about my experiences and what I got out of them. But I would say definitely BMO has a whole ton of questions that you could pull from. I'll have some of the BMO pages that I use linked down below if you want to check those out. But I think you can never go wrong with those. I practiced specifically for McMaster with two friends. They kind of shot random questions at me over Zoom and then I would answer the questions with them. It was really great to have those two friends because they actually brought very unique unique perspectives. One of them was in medical school. So he was very familiar with the traditional medical school speaking process. And my other friend was actually in teacher's college. And so she didn't necessarily have the background in healthcare, but she was able to tell me if I was speaking very clearly about things. Another thing you want to make sure that you do is you simplify everything. You don't necessarily know who's watching your video on the other screen. It could be someone who's in healthcare, but it could be someone who's not. And so you want to make sure that you're explaining those ideas very clearly in a simple, easy to understand way. And so she was really great for giving me that perspective. I would recommend practicing with friends because they're able to pick up on things that you might not see about yourself. So I would say those are the two main resources, BMO, free websites, and then also my friends. In terms of the timeline and the schedule that I stuck to for McMahon, Master specifically, I only started practicing when I got the invite for the supplemental application and it wasn't super structured. I thought of myself as a pretty strong speaker before that. So every night I would practice a few questions. I didn't really want to over practice because I didn't want to sound rehearsed. But if you're on the opposite end where you're not so confident speaking and you want more time to practice, definitely take that time. For the U of T supplemental application process, I had to write my SUP app in five days. I actually found out that I was eligible to apply to U of T very late. Usually their minimum healthcare experience hours required were like 900 and something. And I only had 350 at the time, so I didn't think I was eligible and I wound up checking the program website a few weeks before their deadline and I found out that they had lowered the requirement because of COVID and all of a sudden I was eligible to apply. Those five days I was writing that SUP app every single day and so I definitely crammed in <laughs> writing that supplemental application. If you find yourself in a situation like that it's really not impossible to write in that kind of a time frame but I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> but that was my timeline for U of T unfortunately. Don't recommend doing that. 
that. Okay, so now I'll get into some of the strategies that I use and the tips and tricks that I think are really helpful. I think whatever you do in life, as long as you have a good strategy approaching it, you can accomplish anything. I would say for both supplemental applications, whether you're writing or speaking, review the CanMeds PA framework. I will link it in the description box below, but basically this is a set of qualities that the Canadian Association of Physician Assistants wants you to have in order to be a good PA. So you know an undergrad when you write a midterm and you'll have someone who's marking your midterm, whether it's your TA or your professor, they are looking for specific points for you to hit in order to give you marks. Think about the CanMeds PA framework as that answer key. I don't know what the evaluators are looking for specifically because I'm not affiliated with admissions, but if I could put in a strong guess as to what they are looking for, my bet is on those CanMeds PA rules. So in order to review how these CanMeds PA rules fit into my life, what I decided to do was just print my academic CV and I literally looked at every single thing I did and I just wrote whatever CanMeds PA role fit with that. I know a lot of times people will make spreadsheets and things like that and if that's what you want to do that's great. That was just a little bit too time consuming for me. I would say you want to have at least two to three experiences that you can talk about per CanMeds role. Be very familiar with how you fit into those roles. It's also important to be very efficient with your time through the application process because you're not just applying to PA school. You're probably working at the same time or you're a student and you have other obligations and responsibilities. Totally understandable because life moves on and so you wanna make sure you're as efficient with your time as possible. The next strategy I'll talk about is formatting. Especially for personal questions, what I like to do is talking about an experience, specifically trying to integrate those CanMeds PA framework roles wherever I could, and then interpret that experience. By interpret, I mean talk about a skill that I gained, something I learned, something I realized, and then how it would help me be a good PA in the future and how it would help me be a good PA student. The interpretation part, in my opinion, is the most important part of this framework. So in order to describe this effectively, I actually came up with a little analogy. If you guys are familiar with the condition diabetes, in diabetes, what happens is you have a lot of glucose buildup in your blood vessels because the glucose can't actually get inside your cells. You need this molecule known as insulin in order to help transport the glucose into your body cells. So think of the glucose as all of these experiences that you're talking about. Think about the insulin as your interpretation of that experience. So what you learned, skill you gained, something you realized, and think of the body cells that the glucose is trying to get into as the evaluators who are looking at your application. You could be talking on and on and on and on about an experience you had, i.e. all of this glucose can be building up in your body, but without an interpretation for that experience or the insulin, that actually won't be useful to your body cells or the program evaluators. You need to provide an interpretation in order for them to realize that you you've learned something or you've gained something from that experience you're talking about. That's why I recommend keep the summary of your experience shorter and focus more on what you got out of the experience or the interpretation because that's going to be the most useful to the program. My next tip for you guys is a very simple. It is to answer the question, provide a coherent, clear, direct response to whatever they're asking so you can give them the information that they're looking for. They are receiving thousands of applications. And so if your response is confusing or not necessarily answering the question, they're not gonna be able to get anything out of that question. Now I'll jump in more towards speaking versus writing tips. My first tip would be to be animated. Make sure that you remember to smile, use your eyes, change your facial expressions according to what you're saying. So that way you can transmit some of that emotion through the camera and connect with your evaluator. My next tip would be not to overly practice for speaking responses. I find that the more you practice, you can actually start to develop a script and you don't want to do that because it sounds very rehearsed and that's going to be a detriment to your application. Another thing that a lot of pre-PAs get nervous about is looking at the little camera, your webcam, instead of actually looking at yourself in the monitor. I do think it looks better 
if you look at the camera because you're going to be giving them direct eye contact with you. It's a non-verbal cue. So I'll let you guys in on a little secret. I actually did not look at the cameras <laughs> for either one of my MMIs or for my McMaster Sup app. I just found that when I was practicing, looking at myself on the computer, my answers just sounded so much better than when I was looking at the little camera. Like number one concern should be sounding good on interview day and not necessarily these little technicalities. So another thing that I wanted to mention, I get a ton of questions about how do I eliminate ums and ahs and likes from my vocabulary? Just eliminating those filler words. I would say that it is important to make sure that you're not inserting those filler words very often because it can become distracting. I know this is something people get very nervous about because it is natural to use those filler words when you're talking, but I would say don't overly worry about this. I highly doubt that they're gonna toss your application if you said one um in your response. That shouldn't be the thing that makes you the most nervous. Nervous. What should be more of your focus is making sure that your responses are clear, eloquent, concise, and that you're speaking really well. So now I'll move on to some writing tips for U of T. My first tip for the writing applications would be to use adjectives and descriptor words. Think about it this way. When you're reading a novel or you're reading a story, the author does a really great job at painting a picture of what's going on and you can actually imagine that in your head. That's what you want the evaluator to do. You want your evaluator to be able to picture exactly what you're doing. To be able to do that in a really concise way involves using a lot of adjectives and descriptor words. So for example, instead of saying I tutored during my third year of university, you could say, I tutored seven first year students in introductory calculus at the University of Toronto for three hours a week throughout the entire year. Use very concise yet impactful description so they can really get a picture of what's going on and that's what's going to make you memorable to the evaluator. Another tip I have is not to use big, fancy, complex language. Again, there's thousands of applications, so you want to make it really easy for the evaluator to get what they need to get from your response. Don't make it hard for them to understand what you're saying because that's just going to hinder your ability to make an impression. Just keep it super simple, easy to follow, and give them what they need in that response. And my last tip for you guys is to be confident. I know how nerve wracking the application process can be, but just remember everything you've accomplished, everything that you've been through, everything that has led you to this point, and you're gonna kill this application process. Good luck to everyone applying. If you guys have any questions, questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!